guys, welcome to the British Shooting Show 2020. Let's have a look around. So we're going to kick off with Cesar Guarini, and they've got something new and exciting. Yes, very exciting. Yeah, new Invictus 3s and Invictus 3 Limited. Mm -hmm. um, what's new what's and different? exciting, yeah, yeah. of course, we've got a limited action, so it's a colour case hardened action. With gold inlay. With gold inlays, yes. Same scroll engraving yep. as a standard Invictus 3, but you've got a colour case hardened action as well. Let's have a look. Slightly, Please. slightly different about this gun is its handling characteristics. Okay. I'll let you swing it around and see if you notice. I'll let you lay that one out to me. It kind of <laughs> feels like a big heavy gun in a nice way. Well, it's particularly it long, doesn't, this gun. Particularly long, so it's Not that heavy. essentially our first fixed choke 34 inch barrel. So it is an M spec? It is an M spec. M -spec. Yes. Awesome. Do you sell a lot of fixed chokes? Or is it? Mm, it's about 50 50, to be honest with you. Um, We've recently had uh, one of our fixed choke barrels T choked, which wasn't possible. Which they before. would not do before. What has changed? They've got a new machine. Ah, so, so they have changed. Correct. The the barrel, the, the wall thickness of the barrels was essentially too thin before to machine. Which out. makes these 34 inch barrels very light. Very, very They're light. Extremely very extremely light. Yeah. So they're about 15 30, which a 34 inch barrel is extremely light. Hence why, if you. Which is about a 30 inch multi choke silver pigeon barrel. If you get a feel for the gun, the balance is absolutely, it is absolutely lovely. So you'd think with a 34 inch barrel on it, it should be real front heavy, oversized, but it's, it's not, it handles no, it. It is absolutely it's lovely. It's done it. It's about five and a half grand? Around about. But there's not many of them, you say? Very, the... very few. Very, very few. How many? Uh, at the moment, I think we've got about 18 in total, and, and that's, that's your lot. Yeah, that's, that's your lot. And they'll not make another run? Well, not the same anyway. Not, not, not at the moment, not for us anyway. That is beautiful. Very nice. What, what else have we got? So you're really adding to the Invictus range now? Correct, yeah. yeah. So essentially this one has filled the gap where Invictus 2 wasn't before. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a very, very distinctive, unique look to the action it's, of this gun. It's different, isn't it? It's very different. It's very different, yeah. Again, colour case hardened, but it, unlike any other Garini barrel before, we've got the gold highlights. It's, it's very Italian. It is. I think that's going to be Marmite. Definitely I think Marmite. somebody's either going to Absolutely. fall in love with it and take it home straight away or they're not. Where do you fall on that spectrum, mate? For me, mate, I think the new one with the silver uh, action, I think beautiful. that is the stunning. The new silver that's, revenant. Yeah, yeah, the new silver revenant awesome. is phenomenal. I would have to say for us, um, for the, the few number of people that have seen it, it has been a very Marmite gun. Mm -hmm. One thing I will say is me personally, when it came into us, I was a bit, un yeah, a little unsure. The more I've seen it, it's a grower. The more it grows, yeah. The more it grows, sure, absolutely. I but can see that. Again, same Invictus characteristics, all the interchangeable parts. You get the standard with Invictus action. Um, Have again, a look. Yeah, Brilliant. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I just don't know if the. A little bit too much gold for me. It is quite a lot of gold. It is, it is. But it's a statement gun. Definitely. A statement to yourself, hopefully. <laughs> Most other people. But that handles nicer for me, being smaller, than the 34. A lot nicer. Yeah. Thank you. I like the whole going back into colour case hardened as well. That's a good move. It's not horrible. No. I mean, I've heard a big one. But, well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's different, right? It's different. It's nice to have it's something different. different. You get bored of looking at the same silver action, scratched up. up and there. there's, there's little highlights to the engraving which you won't necessarily see. The sort of raised little areas pearls, you run yeah, your yeah. finger over that you won't necessarily see you know, from a boat to you'll notice. All right, third. They're all quite marmite guns we've looked at today. They're all very distinct. You very have a lot more, we have a lot more classic guns which I haven't looked at anymore. But this is quite, different. Yeah, it's got a bit of an Italian flair to it. It is a ladies gun. I'll let you tell them about it. There you go. Yeah. So this is the new Julia Siren. Um, side plated sporter, same characteristics of the Siren range. So you've got the slightly higher semi Monte Carlo stock, um, shorter of course, tighter radius of the pistol grip. More cast as well. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
But? But, with a very distinctive and very limited look. So we only have five of these guns coming into the UK this year. Wow. And that is it. I really like it. You know, I kind of probably wouldn't own one, obviously. Well, but I think it's epic. Yeah, yeah. I, it's unique. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I challenge you to find a more unique item that's, that's going to catch your eye here today. I bet we could. <laughs> <laughs> With this much class. Oh, there you go. That's, that's <laughs> a defining characteristic. Uh, it. So it is not gold inlay. It is a gold Correct. look and finish. Correct, yeah. Which keeps yeah. the price at relative. Yeah, so relative. essentially if you run your finger over it, you can't feel the engraving. But I'd have to say... With little purple bits that... Are they in are like engraved? Yeah. 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 Just the little touches. Again, a bit like the Invictus 2 that we looked at earlier. You wouldn't necessarily see some of the highlights in the gun from a photograph, but it's only when you see it in the flesh that you see the detail. It is beautiful, like, actually. That's the sort of thing that's going to get you in the good books with a wife for a long time. Oh, God, yeah. You know. Oh, God, yeah. And it would be a beautiful piece for a lady to own to go and shoot. It's the sort of thing you would take out and show your friends, go, look at the wife's gun. Yeah. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like But isn't it pretty? Yeah. yeah, it's a talking point as well. I think it it's is. stunning, mate. It it's really beautiful. is stunning. To yeah. so move in a less conventional direction, which I always like to see anyway. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. It's not going to float everybody's boat, but at the end of the day... It doesn't have to, there's only five people who are allowed exactly them, so right. there you yeah. go. So. I like that. There we are. Mate, thank you very much again. Not a problem, you're welcome. And um, I'm sure we'll catch up with you later. You will. Thank you. Uh, so we just stopped at the BSA stand and they have released this, which is the 10 shot they've had for a little while, but they've now bought it onto just about every other model they've got. Cool. Which is cool, so they've got it on a gas ram system. Yeah, yeah. So just opened up the market of 10 shot brake barrel air rifles. That's pretty awesome. Which actually is all right. There's no gas tank involved for a motor no. shot air gun, which yeah. is cool. I'm, uh, I'm a big big lover of that, because like you say, you get, a, you get a PCP and as soon as you run out of gas, you're done, aren't you? That's, um, <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's and it comes in camo. Oh, I didn't think you'd realise I was holding a gun. Oh, you've got a gun in your hand? Yeah, I know that it just looks like I've got a scope, but that's not true. This is a camo stock. If I hold it oh against God, the dark see, background... Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You, you can, can see the outline? I can see the outline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good, is it? Yeah. yeah, no, actually really epic. Um, they have been producing these for a little while, and it's nice to see them hit the market. Have you shot one? I've not shot one of these, now. No. I've shot, so I've shot both parts of this. I've shot their multi-shot yep. and I've shot their IGT. I don't really like the IGT system. It's not for me. I'm a more of a spring-loving guy than a yeah. gas ram guy, unless we're talking the top-end stuff. Yeah. But for keeping the truck in a bag when you're out doing what you do or going for just a bit of pest control, you set your 10 shots in, you go a bit of fun, go on. Yeah, yeah. There's no fumbling around with a pellet. You can keep it unloaded and safe crack it when you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's the future of brake barrel air guns. Cool. I like that. All right. Let's find some noise making kind of cool. things. We're here with our Chris. Hey, <laughs> you <laughs> Bloody northerners. <laughs> what you got, mate? Uh, we have the brand new Varak HW110 laminate. This is the carbine. Um, it's the first good looking Firearc are genuinely good looking. Yeah. It's very attractive. Um, as Not that any of them are ugly. Element. Sorry. No, yeah, oh, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. it's really quite hurtful first thing in the world. <laughs> oh, come on, it is actually a good looking Firearc. When you put it as the side of the, uh, the, of the synthetics, there's no comparison. No. That's, really that looks cool. Stock. That's it's cool. It's a really nice stiff blade. Um, removable weaver rail on the front, adjustable butt pad, nice little grippy, fingery bit here for the old... Locking around. The old... The old holdy holdy, which I can't do because I can't shoot to save my life. Um, so Who knows to like, Chris? R RRP of 910, available from March. Um, but it is just a standard 110 in that. Yes, it that's is. really and nice. Look, there you go. Cool. The, keeper, the keeper's choice. <laughs> I think it's quite opposite of the keeper's choice. Yeah, keeper's, keeper's choice is a Benelli 10 shot, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but it's like, so we've got. We we don't the talk about Benson. Technology. We've got ballistic polymer action. We've got gorgeous planet stuff. Actually, feels to me a little bit lighter than um, than the standard one. I know yeah. it sounds stupid. Just a bit better balance out the back, yeah. I expect. Yeah. 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 Um, I love that lever. Side levers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side new, new silencer. New silencer. It's about a decibel quieter. Uh, definitely right. quieter. Like quite a bit quieter. Yeah. Uh, I presume because everybody was 
being very well inspired by the Barak Talenta. They've had to up it a little bit. And yeah. I, I, I quite like this on the back. I think it it's a really looks nice quite number, nice yeah. package. The grey laminate's beautiful. They've done a brilliant job with this stuff. Yeah, They've but absolutely done it brilliant. Is this something now going to come standard on everything? Yes, it will do. Ongoing. We, yeah, ongoing, yeah. Um, on all the nice little comb razor would be nice. That'd be the only thing I'd say. I presume but adjustable will come like in 2023. Well, I don't know. Let's hope. That, let's hope. Let's, we've got something different. Go on. Yep. And this is all down to customer feedback. So we have had people at every show going, I really want a thumb up. I really yep. want a laminate. I really, um, um, yep. And we've listened to this, we spoke to Vara, and you think, Oh, right, okay, we've told them. And then all of a sudden they go, ah, oh, we've got something to send you before the show. And you're like, awesome. Wow. Is it? Yeah. And this comes out and you're like... So it only came out a couple of days ago? Yeah, literally we got wow. them last Friday. It's really nice, yeah. mate. Um, that laminar stock's lovely, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's a really, really nice bit. As you know, I'm very biased towards grey laminar. I yeah. think it's beautiful, but this is yeah. top draw. It's really a good, pretty. yeah. Trigger's nice, side lever's handy, real. Real smooth, quite yeah. alright, I like it. The one tends a brilliant black, gun anyway. Uh, you know, we, we keep listening, we keep improving, so everyone went, oh, I want black levers. We've done black levers, yep. cool. We've now got a grey leather, you know, it's a really awesome package. Yeah, yeah. As you know, my 110, my ratting guns had 4,000 pellets through it, I ain't had any issues. It might go in the workshop and a stock might fall on it, one of these grey laminates, hopefully, if, I, if I'm lucky. Yeah. But it's an awesome bit of kit and it's, the, it's, it's from the first batch. Yeah, um, that's really nice. It's a very pretty rifle. Uh, well, it handles fantastically, like it's so quick. <laughs> For those people, and you're right, it, it feels lighter. It, yeah. it feels lighter, it feels more pointable, it feels pokey, and, and, and that's just impressive stock. I, I like the, the slim down far end. Yeah. I actually quite like the, the, the It's curved designed thing. very yeah. nice here, mate. It's, they've done a fabulous job. Well, it's kind of caught up with the rest of the... I agree, but I think that's a real hell of a move. Barak, yeah. I've never been at the forefront style-wise, I think until now. That is a yeah. very, yeah. For I, somebody I, who takes pride in what they do when they go out air rifle shooting and, and loves the gun, that's yeah. the move. That is the move. Most you know, definitely. you want a work tool, you go for the synthetic, you can knock yeah. it about, throw it in and out the truck, do whatever you want. Definitely. You want my, something my, that you're, you're going to look for. Come yeah. to the full length model as well. Uh, we're hoping them to have them in March, yeah. which is... That's a bit of you, Ant. Yeah, I quite like it, mate, yeah. Um, Tell us about it, Andy. Well, they've literally just flown in with Erica this week. We've got them straight onto the stand. This is the new Mossberg MVP light chassis. Which stands for the same as MVP stands for? Most valuable yes. player? Yes, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We've got a completely floating barrel. Yep. Fluted. So you have a big, his big brother there, which yep. is the standard chassis with the uh, Magpul fully adjustable um, stock. Yeah. Comes with Pixini Rail, 223, yeah. 6.5 creed bore, and 308. Okay. Flute barrel, flute bolt, two stage of... blade trigger. I yeah. presume you can clip a rail over the top if all you the, feel the need to do so. Are designed yeah. for that sort of American tactical market. A where UK they... tactical market too, man. <laughs> this is, it was designed for the, <laughs> for the US tactical market, however, it also you lends You can now its, own it in the UK it, too. Yes, and it yeah. now lends itself very well to the new demand for this sort of yeah. rifle in the UK. Quite like the adjustable stock on the back, real quick, real easy, can go from yep. Johnny size down to me. It's kind of nice for if you're keeping it in the back of the truck, getting it off the back seat to the front seat might be quite easy if you did Yeah. lost six inches. Yeah. It's a it's a robust working piece of kit. Yeah. Yeah. But so, it's still capable of target shooting if you feel the need yep, to. Yep, it's got Cerakoted chassis. You know, nice fluted bow. It's got some nice features. There's not many uh, tactical type guns with that sort of flute, is there? No. And I mean, no, it looks nice. it, it looks skeleton and bare now, but by the time you've got a mod and, and a set of rings and a scope on, on yeah. that, and that's end gonna, up upgrading the grip and yeah, that's yep. going to look. Well, the, the grip is, isn't actually a standard grip because you feel it, it is actually quite tactile and yeah. and sticky. It's, it's not horrific. Yeah. No. But the beauty of uh, every grip is you can change them for anything. Which is cool. And the retail price on this as well is under a thousand pounds. It's all right, isn't it? It is, but lovely trigger RRP too. RRP a thousand sixty-eight. So I'm sure you get a, a, a splendid deal from, let's say, the gun shop in Botley. Potentially, or yeah. any local or gun any shop. Any local yeah. gun shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now that's cool, Andy. I like that. Oh, nice bit of kit. I'm looking forward. Should we go have a look at the Breeder Game Gun? Yes. So this is the Breeder Zenith Game. It's a Breeder Zenith L. Oh. Okay. Like a Lux. It is, Ooh. exactly. In true Italian position, Lux. So, it, 
derivative of the, um, the Zenith Sporter that was started this um, early last year. Upgraded wood. Although it's a game gun, or the intentions were for a game gun, we still kept certain features from the sporting side. Slight palm swell, mm -hmm. sporting action, and adjustable trigger. Okay. Yep. If you look at the barrels, okay. Very nice. The new barrels. Solid fixture, top rib. Solid top rib. Solid mid rib. Solid mid rib. What All are the palm, chokes fixed at? Three quarter and three quarter. To and, be opened. And steel shot proof. Nice. Ooh. Two, three, two and three quarter inch barrel. 18.44. Now that is a, oh my god. Limited gun, there is only 30 coming into the UK. That is immensely light. There is 15 30 inch and 15 32 inches. And That's it's one of the few guns that doesn't look out of place with someone of, of your stature. It's really very nice. I, yeah, you it's think, a you lot think lighter that, than you think, hold yeah. on to that. You think with that solid rib and that mid rib, it'd be incredibly uh, heavy, but it's not, is it? It's actually very nice. It's a very sporting stock, which yeah. is quite pleasant. Breed and it's real smooth as well, actually, isn't it? Real smooth. I know she's tight, but real smooth. Wouldn't be after you've had it for a week. Yeah, I quite like it. It's quite, quite big in the hand. Quite big in the hand. That's it. That's the, the only thing I'd say about it for me. Somebody with small hands. It's yep. That that palm swelling that they've kept it's a, it's is small quite full. You know, yeah. it, it, it is just a little bit maybe too much for me. But but apart from that, the weight wise, balance wise, it it's, handles lovely. It really is very nice. Um, you know, that rib's like a railway. Is it sleeper. an alloy action or just a very lightweight action where it's so no, low, no, it's slim line. standard steel action. Wow. And it comes up lovely. But the barrels are actually. That's where all the work, that's where all the change has gone into those barrels. One thing Breed are really proud about is the work that they put into their barrels more than anything else. And when you come to the factory, because we've had an invitation yeah. for you to go there, you'll see the machines running and, and the emphasis on that barrel work. Well, yeah. the fact that they can actually start putting steel shot through three quarter chokes, this is a, re that's a real good move. It's already done and CIP approved. Obviously not steel magnum, but it's still steel shot proof. Fleur de -lis. Yeah. Yeah. Very so nice. It is yeah, awesome. That's really awesome. The only thing you can't put three-inch shells through it, but why would you want to? Why would you? Well, you know, yeah, buy, so buy a gun that takes it if you want to. Breed, right. Breeder on the Sporters are now saying that they want to go revert to a three-inch chamber. Why? Don't can't know. be demand. No, it's not demand. It's because they feel that the rest of the world wants it with Beretta. Do uh, they? Brand. Yes, apparently. So they, they Love want your it. opinion on that. I don't think there is any need for it unless you are got Personally, a need for it. Personally, I don't know anyone that shoots clay pigeons with a three-inch shell. I know no one who shoots game with a three-inch shell either. No. no, but the fashion has been Apart from Wild Fowlers, now, but I don't think they're going to buy one of these. If you look at the big manufacturers, they're all going for three-inch changes. Really? Yeah. It's ridiculous. All, all ridiculous. A it's, it's a dual, isn't it? Yeah. So. And in certain countries where you can shoot deer, a three-inch for a slug actually is what, nice. What, a DT-11? Even a DT-11 is three-inch chamber. Yeah, yeah. Why? You're making a chamber for something that nobody shoots. Yeah. I'll very tell you what, that is actually really very, very nice, it isn't is. it? It doesn't run. feel front heavy in the slightest. It it's no. just beautiful. Really is. And I don't dislike the engraving. It's, no. It's not ostentatious. It's just... Minimalist, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's very minimalist. But it is well done for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. I'd like to take one out and have a shot with it. I very much... Uh, you well, got a demo one? <laughs> is this a demo one? That is the demo one, yeah. Can yeah. we have a go with it? Yeah. Thank you. And that's awesome. Yeah, that's really nice. I'll get this one out to you possibly the end of next week. Brilliant, thank you. By the yeah. time we get back from the show, yeah. etc. So, All right. what else have we got? So, John, and um, we're revisiting this again. I think this is gonna be our favourite gun. It's up there, mate. Most definitely. Yeah. Especially with a bit of wood on like that. So mm. this is a Grade Nine K3 in 757R. Again, favourite gun, favourite calibre. Mm. It just doesn't tire. It's one of those guns you don't grow out of and you just get more into. The just, only reason you don't own one is because... It's simple. Yeah. To like. And from a gamekeeper's perspective, your thoughts on something like this? I think they're phenomenal. I think we were just talking about it before, you know, your hobby stalker, your guy who goes out and shoots one deer a year, two deer a year. Why can he not have something that's absolutely stunning like that? You know, lightweight. Well, well they're getting much in trouble because they all want to be bigger, better killers than they are. Yeah, but they want to walk around. <laughs> we were saying, you know, spare magazine, spare bolt, bomb in bolt barrel, holster, six five cream. Mm. Yeah, yeah, massive bipod. <laughs> and they want all the gear 
when realistically you take it back to basics, out stalking it's with something so much like more that. Pleasure, you, you, it really you, is. you know, you put a nice scope on that, a little sling on it, you could chuck it over your shoulder and you could walk for miles, it wouldn't matter. I'd have one if I could, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? If I, if I could justify rolling one round in the Land Rover with me, I would do, because it's a stunning piece of equipment. But I don't understand why there isn't more of them out there. You know, what they a piece of kit. On. I will say this year, or last year, 2018, yeah. we probably sold more of these than, when, than we did the actual straight bull helix. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It and is, unsurprisingly, it on. yeah. yeah. I've travelled all over mine. I love the work, just break it down like a full 10, yeah. put it into my overnight bag, go in a hotel, doesn't cause any, any stir. Hey. The mildly depressing part is they're being phased out the next three years. Well, they're being replaced over over the coming year or so with the new K5. The K5 is a little bit different. If it's an upgrade or not, that's a matter of opinion. It's a change. It's a change. A big change. So, okay. a few people are asking me about it. What are we expecting to see from it? Very similar to characteristics as this. Okay. However, it's more modular. So, there is a. a it's appealing to the techies as opposed to the purists, perhaps? No, not necessarily. It's, it's still a purist rifle, but you have the ability to interchange the barrels. Mm -hmm. As with this, the barrels need fitting. Yep. Um, the K3, they've just perfected the machine that little bit. And they've got K5, a removable block like the K120 did. And they've got a, a removable block as well yep. for security. Not something that would appeal to me. Well, the 90% of no. people, but yeah. But there are certain people out there that would want a standard fluted barrel like this. Yep. However, they might also, in a different what calibre, the, a longer barrel. Yeah. Or three inch wind mag barrel. And yeah. So it is one of those now we have a, K, a K5, which you can have a whole um, Build -a -bear range rifle. of barrels. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That sounds awesome, good. Awesome, mate. Thank you very much. No problem yeah. at all. As always, again. boys, thank you very much. Take care. Hi guys, we're here on the Blaza stand. We've picked up this as the F16 game. We haven't actually reviewed it on the channel, but they are insanely light. So they're six pound 13 ounces versus the Sport, which is seven pound 10 ounces. So they've stripped it all the way out of it. What do you think, mate? I really like the way it handles, mate. It's really light. Yeah. It is light. That palm swelling's not as aggressive as some of the other ones we've handled today. Palm swell seems to it, be the flavor of the year, don't they? Yeah. On everything. I just think it's very plain. It could do with a little bit of engraving on it. You can pay for that. Yeah, the timber. It's all right. It's, it's all right. Nice, but it's blazer graded. So a grade four blazer is very different to the rest of the world's grades. Yeah. But they are. They're all right. They're a nice gun. Yeah. I don't think it would be for me. I think that. That safety want, catch on if, it seems a bit clunky. It's an F16, though. I know. But if you're going to be paying that sort of money for a gun, three grand, you buy a second hand F3. Yeah, which exactly. Is, probably where I go to be fair. However, you're going to struggle to find anything that's six pound thirteen. Yeah, that's a lie. Actually, there's loads of stuff out there that's lightweight now that can compete with that for the same money. And yeah. I don't want to insult it because it's actually a really nice gun. I love it is. the sort of that finish. It's cool and precisely grey. Yeah. And if you spin it, spin the stock over, this side's actually pretty. Yeah. Look, it's it's nice. It is. It, it's. it's yeah, it, it is what it is. But it is it's mildly a, underwhelming. Yeah, it's not gonna... I guess that's the, that's why you buy an F-16, because they are mildly underwhelming. Yeah, it's not gonna blow my socks off, mate, but it's a nice gun. It's a nice gun. Definitely. Wouldn't trade any your for it? No, of course not. Not, not, not today, anyway. <laughs> Put it on back, kiss your feet. Is that okay? Which 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 one did you win the championship with? You won the championship with this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you gonna explain why? Because Paul Tudor just gave me a follow on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, my life sucks. <laughs> So possibly the best gun at the show, Geordie? Possibly. Depends on who's reviewing it, I guess, doesn't it? Well, come on, spill it out. What do you think? What is it? Uh, so it's a DT11, double E, double L. It's quite smart. Yeah, so it's, it's one smart, of the actually. guns from our premium, premium gun range. Uh, you see it's got lovely scroll engraving on it. Uh, How much hand finishing goes into this? Is hand done? Uh, so no, there is a laser engraving. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Beretta have been working on Blades and Grave obviously for the last couple of years. It's um, pretty nice. But as you can see, the quality of it is, is exceptional. It is unbelievable, isn't it? How much is it? Uh, so 16,000 suggested retail price. Yeah. Can I touch it? Go on then. Oh wow, this is trust, isn't it? Thank you, mate. So one of the nice things I think about the DT10 WEL um, and a lot of customers that have really been buying them and using them as a one was a fantastic clay gun, mm -hmm. but also uh, customers that have been buying them as well have been using them on high um, high bird days. I was going to say it actually it's not too dedicated to the sporter. That palm swell is lovely. You'll like that. No, Obviously, it, you'll like it's that. It's a gun that wouldn't. It says Beretta on it. It's a Beretta, mate. Yeah. That means it's perfect for me. It's a gun it? that wouldn't look. Um, out of place on a game shoot. No. Obviously, with the DT11 and the barrel profile on them, they absorb recoil extremely, extremely well. Yep. There's a lot of weight in between the hands as well, so they balance up really well. Nice grade of timber on it. Yeah, nice grade wood on there as yeah. well. Um, so, all round, just a, a, a top, top gun. It's beautiful with that hand polishing against the rest it of it. It is, yeah. It's a beautifully put together thing. It's one of those guns, the more, I think, the more you look at it, you, you can the appreciate it. The more you appreciate it, it don't yeah. you? Yeah. 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 It's just a really classic, timeless looking thing. Yeah, and, and I think the DC-11 as well, over the last sort of couple of years, has really started to pick up and build some momentum. Well, when it first came out, everyone's always like, it is not a DT-10, it's not fair. Yeah. And everyone whinged, and as soon as it's been around for a couple of years, actually, it becomes accepted. But when in you actually way. look at the gun itself, I mean, originally the stock dimensions when they first came out, they were slightly beefier, slightly chunkier. Mm -hmm. yeah. That has been changed, so it is, they are- It is a bit better. It's a lot better to handle now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so that the pistol grip... The DT-10s, I always remember being a big, chunky lump of a thing, you know? So this that, thing's not. No, that pistol grip's a lot similar. So yeah. actually, you're looking at the stock really is virtually identical to a DT-10, yeah. which I don't think a lot of people actually realise still to this day. You've got to change something to change it back. I think that's quite important. Because everything stays the same, people get bored. So you yeah. need to, like, make people unhappy before you make them really happy again. And it <laughs> is really beautiful. It is. They do a game version of this? Uh, there is, there's no game scene version on a DT11 WEL. There yeah. is a game scene version on a DT11L. L, yeah. yeah, so you've got a scroll variant and a game scene variant on that. That's a shame. It's a shame. It'd be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? Well, the future is well, a if you broad want, horizontal place with lots of opportunity for want, GMK to listen to us. Yeah. Well, if yeah, you want yeah. game scene, you could always step up to an SL3, couldn't you? Well, you could indeed. Would. It's not that much of a step though. What? Another five grand? It's a different action. Which is quite a lot of money, I well, appreciate. Well, it's a different that. action, <laughs> different gun. But in the scheme of things, when you're at, when you're at 16 to go to five, another five yeah, is not. another five grand. Another if you've got 16, well, you've clearly got 21. They're yeah, looking yeah. at a little bit more, but uh, it, again, it's a, it's a different action. It's a different gun altogether than again. I think I would go for a, this. I'd go for the SL3. The you like the SL3? Yeah. I want the mirror polish one. I want though. the mirror polish one with my name then carved yeah. into the middle of the mirror Actually, polish. Actually, I, I want they released a um, limited edition single one-off with a side lever, All serpentine right. edition. Serpentine, yeah. Lovely. Oh, wow. I'm not for sale, I presume. And if it is, it'd be like 60 grand. As yeah. far as I'm aware, I think it's still at the uh, Beretta, in Beretta's collection. I was in Italy, so. Let's hope they bring it to Iwa, maybe. You never know. Mate, thank you very much. No, no worries at all. Thanks again, mate. Lovely gun. Lovely to see you. Any opportunity to spend time with you, Geordie. Lovely to see you. It's a wonderful one. So here with a big deal, Stu Grant, Elite Optical Distribution. Hello. Brought in some Epic Thermal. We have. We've got some really exciting new products at the show here. Yep. This is the PARD Thermal Weapon Scope. So a lot of you will be aware of the PARD the unit. The PARD, they definitely Double exist. 007 yeah. clip-on, yep. 400 quid night vision. It's Sold really, really well. broken the market Amazing for anybody more expensive. Great value for money. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. Yeah, actually a product that I can really get behind, yeah. depressingly. But they've got a thermal scope. Yeah. So this is fresh on our stand. First time anyone's really seen it in this country. It is unbelievably good. Like, unbelievably good. So we're gonna do a couple of different models, a couple of different lens sizes. Um, it's a super simple, straightforward weapon scope. Yeah, with a quick detachable mount built on. Yeah, easy it's, to set up, easy to use. It's, it's actually really nice. No idea on pricing yet, but it shall be hopefully affordable. We're just negotiating with them at the moment. <laughs> And uh, what's this? This is a new brand. Um, you guys will recognize this. Hick Vision make security cameras, basically. They've done seven billion US dollars last year in security cameras. Thermal security cameras or just all over? All types okay. of security cameras. So I think you've got them in your shop. We do, yeah. They're in every shop. They're yeah. everywhere. Um, so they have 10,000 engineers who are able to wow. develop this stuff really quickly. And they're using all of their technology. So the Wi-Fi, yeah. uh, it's waterproof. 
uh, and you get a really clear image out of it. Um, great value, good, good pricing. How much are these going to get coming in at? So this one's going to retail at 1,900 quid. That's all right. And we've got the entry level one, which again. Uh, I tell you what, that is amazing. For, yeah, we say good, grand. Great value for money. That yeah. is actually really, really good thermal. Yeah, uh, waterproof, uh, shockproof. How uh, waterproof? I, you, I don't know. It's not like hundreds of meters, but you're not going to break it in the rain. Oh, you're going to take it for a little swim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you could. You could just hold it up here. Thanks, mate. Right? <laughs> Straight in the clouds. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, super easy to use. Um, and it has Wi-Fi, so you can connect it into your phone or your iPad. You can stream, you can set it up that way. Oh, it's cool, um, man. It's just, uh, yeah, it's kind of the next generation, isn't it? Everyone's, everyone's interested in thermal. And it's, I mean, it's, well, it's about four or five thermal stands here, and it's coming down in price just, and going up in quality at the top end, oh, which is really good to see. Chinese, yeah, the Chinese manufacturers are making some really good stuff. Yep. It's becoming a lot more affordable. I think that's where PARD have, have captured that night vision market is... Even if you're not that interested in night vision, you can For 400 just have quid. One to, to yeah. try it, and see if it works. Yeah. This is it. Um, and this is what this is going to do. These spotters, the thermal weapon scopes. It's an exciting time. It really is. I imagine, it's like 10 years ago, when you just about had night sight come out. Yeah, right. And everyone was like, they're the best thing since sliced bread. And they're 600 quid. Night sight still has a place. But obviously, obviously. It's it's a changing market. Well, they've just upgraded all their models yeah. as well. So you think back to the originals that could barely see 50 yards, yeah. and everyone's like, they're the best. But they've had to up their game to keep pace oh, with yeah. everybody else. So yeah, you know, it's um, yeah, it's, Man, a, it's a cool time. I love it. Anything particularly ex exciting else that you think's coming this year? Uh, the Optizan CP, three yep. to 12 by 32 compact scope, yeah. mega lightweight, really, really small level of parallax error. So for an HFT shooter. You can just jump on that, set your focus somewhere in the middle, shoot away, your point of impact isn't going to change. You make it sound so easy. It is so easy, it's really a difficult thing. To is that explain. why you're the HFT world champion? Uh, I'm with the HFT world champion, yeah, uh, he's on our stand. And that is as good as being him. Like me, I'm basically the best cameraman in the field sports industry, because <laughs> I'm near David Wright. <laughs> Mate, thank you very much. That's cool. Hey guys, we just pulled up to the Custom Fit Guards bit. They've released two new products. I wear their gear, I really rate it. And when Richard stopped, you know, fiddling with a stranger's ear, we will find out what's on. Hey guys, we're here with CFG, and they just dropped two new products. Two new products just for you. Shall I show you, Johnny? Just for me, one in each ear. Well, yeah, Go on, let's have yeah, it. Exactly. So, so Johnny's basically had the CF Duo, which has been, to be honest, our best-selling uh, kind of uh, passive product on the market for a long time. Dishwasher and clothes washer safe. Exactly well, that. Exactly that. I did tell you. I did tell you. Non-guaranteed, so, I'm sure. But no, but I do say it can survive a yeah, run. Yeah. yeah, it'll survive a run. But um, basically, we've just changed it up a little bit. We're allowing a bit more low-level sound to come through with a brand new filter. Um, it's a bit more obvious what setting you're on because it's actually got now a slider on it. Um, and it's just a really different product for the market, so I'm chuffed with it. So it's now and called it's, the Switch, and it's, it's the switch. five quid more or something. Five quid more, because it took a bit more development actually to make it, um, with a lot of kind of uh, printing and, and, uh, and product developments on it. But it's uh, made for a great product, so we're chuffed with it. That's cool. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a bit sense. different, isn't it? Yeah, just make, if we can make something a bit better, a bit easier, and try and keep it at the same price, we're going to do it at the end of the day, because um, that's what we're known for. Then finally, we've got the CF Digital Pro. Now, this has added a bit more cash to it in the sense of um, it's a bit more of an upmarket version of the CF Digital. Not to take again anything away from the CF Digital because it's our best seller. It's an awesome bit of kit again. But with this we've even got touch technology so all you have to do is tap your ear to change setting. It's got a longer battery life. It's also um, got an extra two programs on it. And you just touch over the sensor there? You literally just touch over it, yeah, with two fingers. You press it down, let go. Oh, so it's pressure? Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to like go in a dark room and there's light sensitive? <laughs> no, it's That'll definitely not. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely not. You'll That's be cool. okay. Um, Whose ear is that, by the way? That's my dad's ear. Wow. Over there. There you go. Yeah, good, great ears. Great model for ears, that's for sure. And uh, and that's really it. So we've just basically changed it up a little bit with the kind of duo turning into the switch. Just moving your technology um, along. You've got it. Yeah. You've got it, haven't you? Because also, we, you know, I well, think... If you want to be the best, as you are. I don't want to be the best, Johnny. I am he the best. He is the best. Thank you. can just you. resent your position then. 
Exactly. Let down the camera. Um, so yeah, it's exactly that. So you know, uh, it's always a good time at the British Shooting Show. Always nice to see Johnny. Unfortunately, he's here again, hassling me. Had any disgusting years today? No, actually, do you know what I said to Dad? Everyone's been really clean. So thank you, everyone who came on Friday. You know who you are. So hygienic. Yeah, exactly. Been really hygienic with me. Um, and that's been really it, to be honest, Johnny. Otherwise, it's been a nice show. And yeah. have, you a nice, have you been all right since I've seen you last? Well, have you done any shooting? Has anyone even seen you two uh, being here? Yeah, okay. I'll no, yeah, no to be honest with you, I haven't done any shooting. It's been really busy at the lab. Like, the lab's grown. We've got Arjun on and extra people, so it's gone a bit mad. We've got a lot more shows that we're doing. That's why I look like I've aged about 50 years. Um, but it's been brilliant, really. So uh, that's kind of it. And, uh, and yeah. What's new from Ely this year, mate? Hi, good to meet you again. It's great to see you. Thanks for uh, working so hard and putting out the Pro Eco World Dot on your channel. Well, it's a pleasure. It's, a, it's really good of you to actually produce a product that is moving things forward. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's good. So we've just released um, the Alarm Mines, which are coming in packs of 20. Um, they're basically a black powder product, a small blank. that will go in. Uh, Plenty of smoke and noise. And loads of smoke, yeah, loads of go. noise. Perfect for uh, setting up around a farm, a security measure for when you need to know if people are entering in a certain area. Or you can set the trip wires up on the standard yeah. fire. Or you can chuck them in your mate's gun when you're on a shoot <laughs> yeah, and yeah. let him have let, it. Let him have it. Yeah. Um, but the, the main thing will be um, security. security. Yeah, security yeah, that's alarm. nice. So that's a brand new product for this coming season. We've uh, just launched, just released. Yeah. So um, key things with black powder. Make yeah. sure you don't store any more than uh, 1,250 of these. Without on a your explosives of there. Yes, yeah. exactly. If you want to... Have you have to be a bit of a hoarder to get a thousand of them. Yes, correct. Or have very criminal activity. Yeah, so what I would very, say very. is, yeah, just be, just yeah, be yeah. mindful of that. So you can't just buy thousands and thousands. Um, if you want more than 10,000, you have to go and see the HSE as well. Yeah. Because um, I've, I've done all the maths on the explosive quantities. So that's just, Very good. A, just a little bit of uh, knowledge there for your, for your viewers. So new this year, we've got the Alpha Elite um, practical shooting loads in birdshot. And we'll release a buckshot as well coming out in uh, three, two or three months time, which will uh, have buffered shot inside. Okay. So it'll have a buffering inside to separate the, the shot inside the cartridge so that you get less deformed pellets and more in the pattern. It's really important when you're shooting Alpha Charlie Delta targets and trying to get as many, as many. pellets in the, in, the, in the target zone. So they're possible. designed for very uh, tight. tight, tight what pattern. size is Buck Alpha Elite? So Buck is double O. Okay. So basically Buck Shark it's is quite large. It's very large. You can get about eight or nine in a, in a standard And it's like a 32 gram or is this an ounce? It'll be an ounce load. Okay, cool. So to, to start it off and then we'll move on to we'll see if we can get the 32 load out there. Uh, later in the year we're planning to bring in a slug as well for the practical shooters awesome. as well. Because, so you're really going into that market yeah, head absolutely, on? absolutely, yeah, because we've seen such growth and such demand off the well, back I of it. I know at the moment most of them just come in and buy Clear Pigeon or something like that. Yeah, and so what we're trying to do is... Pigeon make, Select or something. Yeah. Pigeon Power. Pigeon Power. That's well, it, yeah. Well, we're actually clear. It's Pigeon Select. Pigeon Select. I got it first <laughs> time. Oh, God damn it. It's too many cartridge manufacturers I know. Out there. There's a, there's a Need to crush the competition, <laughs> apart from the guys that I like. Um, <laughs> so, clearly, where we're, we're, what we're trying to do is basically make sure that the, the powder we put in there is a really low smoke powder. Yep. So it will actually reduce the amount of visibility, sorry, increase the amount of visibility when they're shooting on targets. Yep. So that they can get to the next target quicker and quicker and quicker. So it's all about speed and accuracy with these guys. So we've, we've been listening and working with uh, Canchapo and three guys from um, the Team Williamson. Yep. So that's Faye. Just there. Faye, James, and uh, John Williamson who've nice. been helping us develop this product. So we're really pleased awesome. with the development. Very nice. Thank you. So here at ASI, there we King. The King of ASI. Thank you very much. What have you got there, man? Right, so this is the Rattini Regal Extra. It's really pretty. It is pretty. Um, it's, it's in the family of the, the Regals, mm -hmm. which uh, have been around for a, a short while now. Um, it's one step up from the, the Regal Extra, uh, but one step in more than one direction. We've got the most wonderful bits of wood on them now. It is stunning. This is great for, it is this really is the stunning. standard wood, which you can more or less expect. 
Um, and in common with the, the extra nomenclature, uh, it's got the game scene engraving. So you've got some rather nice looking cartridges on one yeah. side. See, I, I think I actually prefer that to the grand deluxe magical yeah. one that, w that we reviewed yeah, actually. Absolutely. I think this it is actually a nicer, uh, more, Eng more English style. Yeah, maybe. barrel lengths to your choice, fixed joke, multi-choke. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's basically a gun that, that ticks as many boxes as we can underneath that seven and a half grand bracket. I think um, it's it actually very, very good gun. value. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, if you pulled it out next to, for example, the Jubilee. I was going to say, um, it's, when, you, when you put that actually next door to a, a straightforward double E double L, oh. um, uh, this is more special. There are in different categories. You know, this is a, think, extremely special. This is the new uh, high tech 2020 on Paranzi. Um, you've limited got run? No, not limited run, We're but. Limited but, to 2020 builds? Yes. Okay. So it's one design, which has got the uh, the Paranzi logo it is stunning. etched on it's there really with, the, nice. with, the, with the 2020 underneath and the circular red, which is to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, it's available in this black action. You've got it also available in a silver action and they've just um, come up with a gold action as well which has got the s silver writing on the gold background. Um, high tech stock and four end, you've got a different choice of different four end profiles, uh, different choice of barrel lengths obviously, everything from, oh, I can't remember, 26 inch up to 34 inch by I think. the half centimetre. By the half centimetre. So, there's so, something... so when you buy one of these, yeah. right, and you're saying this gun was 17.7? Yep. You can literally do what you want to yep. it, and providing the wood grade remains the same, Correct. and it's not too radical, yep. it's 17.7. Yep, exactly. So that's that's the attraction, that people are going to actually physically go out to the factory and... Um, What's it like? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it's a great experience. I'd thoroughly recommend anybody to do it. Um, and they'll make a stock for you, and it's that's that, that, that's no extra charge. Um, as, as you rightly said, unless you go up for a different wood grade this is SC2 grade wood on here you could go to SC3 um, but you know they will fit the gun for you they have a they have a pattern plate inside the factory so that you can pattern plate it um, uh, and they, they have a the shooting ground on site as well they, they have out the back yeah they've got a full um, uh, skeet layout and there's a uh, what, trap what, layout as well so what is the most affordable priority for somebody who wants that experience but perhaps doesn't want to be into the, the 17.7 mark yeah well you, you'd be looking at the standard high tech which is retails at just under 10,000. That's um, quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, that's actually not bad. You yeah. know what you get. Yeah, exactly. It's a custom build yeah. You get the whole experience if you want to. I mean, to fly out to the factory isn't expensive. Um, you know, that's got a Ryanair's about. A couple hundred quid. Uh, not even that. Um, they, they, I think flights in January were 20 quid each way. Wow. You know, um, the hotel up the road they use isn't expensive. It's very nice. It's sort of 70 euros a night. So it's not an expensive process. Um, and everyone that's done it thinks it's fantastic. That's one of the things with Barazzi, even the barrel length, you can go down to barrel weight as well. Which is yeah, barrel weight. You could, they'll, they'll get as close as they can. It's very difficult because obviously when you make the barrels, obviously they then strike them off and then black them. So it is an approximate weight. Yes. But you can specify approximately yeah, yeah. within heavier perhaps, please, yes, or yeah. lighter Well, you can please. say between 15, 1530 and 1570. That's not bad. No, yeah, they get, get, get it pretty on. So. Um, yeah, that's fine. Obviously, left and right-handed, adjustable stocks if you want them. There's the trap configuration if you want it, um, sporting configurations, uh, skeet, and you know the whole nine yards. Thank that you. is that is the Parazzi 2020. Thank you very much. It's very tight. No problem. Really nice to see you, John. Thank you, mate. Guys, I've just been shown this. This is the Browning B725 Sport, or B725S. The B725S1 is no longer a thing. And this is the new, reimagined, refined 725. For those of you who like older Brownings, you're gonna absolutely love this. This feels like a Browning. A proper, it feels like a 525, just slimmer and nicer. So what they've done, all right, same pad system. The stock has been reprofiled completely with more taper around the head so they had quite a big fat stock before and then on the fixed comb versions most people end up having to move that comb over now they got a really nice smooth radius 
really smart. The same Browning adjuster in the back. The palm swell has moved up and it's been spread out a bit. So actually, you get a much more versatile palm swell. You can move all the way down, all the way up, and it still works really nicely. Same adjustable trigger, same DS chokes. However, the finish on all of the black metal work is now flat matte black. It's pretty cool. Um, those of you who like, like it, well, there's a really small run of Berettas out there with matte black barrels, and I think they look epic. And this is just a really nicely done, better done, to be honest, because it's 20 years ago the Beretta did that matte black finish on all the parts. I think it's awesome. I would have liked to have seen a black trigger too, but that would have went off, maybe a silver one. The gold's cool, doesn't matter, it's a brownie. The fore end is slimmed down throughout the front with a very slight tulip, and that is awesome. So actually what you now have is a bit of depth in your left hand, but your fingers can wrap up into this thin bit on the front, and it's really lovely. Balance-wise, as standard, it handles very, very nicely. Quite neutrally both weighted, just a little bit forward. It balances like an absolute demon. Wow something that's off the shelf completely that's pretty cool so no wait however if you don't like that it does is compatible with all Browning's barrel weights and stock weights so you can take this perfectly balanced machine and cock it up a little bit because there's always someone out there who might want to do that I was not a fan of the 75 when it first came out they changed it and tweaked it a little bit and I actually quite liked it I now am genuinely a huge fan of this base grade 75 Sporter it is lovely the sport and guns go for a two and a bit grand, I think it's up there. Anyway, let's go. Here we have the latest offering in Marlin, um, adjustable stock made by Form. Um, as most people will know and complain about, stock's really low on a Marlin. Uh, so if you're using a scope, you're kind of a, quite a few inches too low. So Pete from Form kindly provided this as this prototype option um, very cool nice uh, range of uh, laminates available um, and they can clip onto just about any marlin clip onto just about any marlin they'll be we'll be offering the straight stock um, shortly which is there so that'll be the next option we do but at the moment these are the models we're doing um, any color any grip wrap that you want most of them will be coming threaded as you see on the dark series here uh, so serious hunting option for those that want to. 30-30 um, or something like that. 30-30. Would you use gear. one for hunting? I probably would have to get myself 45-70, which is extraordinarily cool. Um, like that gun a lot. Uh, I'd like to see that in an adjustable stock option as well, which would, again will be coming shortly. Uh, it's literally the first we've had here. We rushed them out to get to the show. So, yeah. Great stuff. Awesome. I want to see if we open sights on for 100 yard deer stalking. Probably take that off and put over open sight in it. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. That'd, that'd be my use through. for it. So they've got the ghost sights here. Yeah. Open sight, deer stalking rush if you want. Arguably, you don't really need the adjustable cone on that side of things, but if you want to put a dot sight, something with it, you've got that option. Um, nice side of that, if it's threaded. Um, you can make it less bang. That's it. Yeah. Bill from DPT is doing some uh, moderator options for that, that product already. They're really well, sort of underslung mods. No, or? just a straight. Relatively thin profile to go on there. These are the dot sides, so you'll be able to see over yeah. the top of it, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Next. Uh, here we have uh, Form's latest offering in the 783. There's an amazing review of those. There is an amazing review of those. But it does not have one of them. It does not have the Gunsmith adapter in. So they're fit to uh, standard. They're fit to standard now. Um, you've got aluminium oh, fed, it's detachable magazine. It is metal. Um, that's 4 plus 1 capacity. Um, that rifle retails for 989, so for an adjustable comb, pillar it's a bedding. a rifle with an adjustable comb, with, with, with a scope that one in it. and a mod, it's 1200 quid. That's yeah. it. Nice and obscene rifle for 1200 quid. Yeah. Five shot actually guarantee, sports or environment available. And it's superbly accurate as well. Ridiculously accurate. 22, 24, 26 inch barrel lengths. Um, for those you can get for a round of grand. Um, pretty astounding bit of kit, really. Hey, that's a lot of rifle for the money in it. Film are coming out with some epic stuff at the moment. And they've really, really revolutionised a lot yeah, of products here just with some special bits. Yeah, changing the Marlins, changing the Remingtons, giving something a bit different. And a uh, bit of UKism as well, which is. It's nice, nice. it's a UK made product. Um, and we can all get behind that in like recent events. Um, really good group of guys. Uh, the fact that it's made in the UK obviously means they can get the pillar bedding in. 
Um, the quality of finish is exceptional. That's a handle finish. And you can um, phone them if you have, not if you have issues, but if you want anything, they, they are there. There you go. Always to help. advice on hand. Yeah. You have length of pull adjustable as well. Um, lovely little rifle. Great little stalking video kit. You've got one. All calibers. Of, oh, yeah, shoot yeah. one myself. Uh, all calibers available. So the guys from Form said today, if if a customer had an issue with a form stock that he wanted it just tweaking ever so slightly, can contact them direct, send it back, they'll have a day turnaround, send it back. Gotcha. Now where do you get that? You don't. You, you don't, don't get that. I mean, and for a stock like that, that's that's pretty custom, pretty customized stock. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely. Changes the rifle, the recoil so much better through these. Um, yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with a basic rifle, but it is a basic rifle, 650 quid. Well, a basic rifle is what 650 out the door with all the bits. It's not yeah. bad to get that on it. Hey, that's pretty pretty outstanding. Yeah, um, and they're a great bunch of guys to to deal with. We what we've had to do with them for the last couple of days. Nice guys, nothing's a problem. Nothing's too much either, no. which is no. a real treat. Here we have an Aseka Sporter, um, that black tape isn't the standard, that's just to stop the floor plate coming out. Uh, fully custom rifle, um, Timmy Trigger, um, custom Aseka action. So is it kind of based around a Remington, or is that a fallacy? No, it's a fallacy, it's more like an old Winchester action. Okay. Um, Three bolt. Fluted bolt. Cool. bolt. That's the old bolt release, which does separate from the Remington. Um, super tight tolerances, this is a custom rifle, we just happen to stop it. Um, that's a custom stock made specifically for Naseka by Bell and Carson. Uh, full length aluminium, aluminium bed, bedding block. Um, tested for five shot accuracy, half MOA rifle only. It's got to wow. do that half MOA to get out the factory. Yeah. Uh, all the production so side. that is what you're paying for is just yeah. extra accuracy, extra nice, and a, it's custom. It's custom built. It's a proper custom built rifle. Um, you can have it in any format you want. These are the ones we stock. They are threaded. Um, we spec from 14 by 1 just because that's a common thread in the UK or used to be. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a lovely lightweight sporter. You've also got the long range rifle there. Uh, that one's in 7mm rim mag, that's fluted. That's clearly a Bell and Carlson, as is that one. Um, this is the tactical uh, in 300 wind mag. That rifle is typically retailing just north of 4 grand, which is a hell of a lot. Um, they're high quality Bartlin or Shilling barrels, they'll put on those depending on the spec. Um, we've done all ours in stainless because that's easier, but you can have high carbon barrel if you want to. Uh, it comes with a rail, comes in a hard pelly case, um, awful lot of gun for the money. That's about three and a half retail, the long range. This is just north of three. Um, Are they worth the extra money? Um, I think so, but it depends what you're after. Um, if you want a custom rifle, you're normally looking at five grand, whereas because the Seeker is now owned by Remington. We can afford to the scale have stock. Such they can do it. They can buy in better quantities. They can get the cost of some, something that's previously a little bit inaccessible to most people. Well, they're not the three grand a cheap rifle, but when you look at it's not an expensive one by comparison to a lot of stuff out there today. For what you're getting, those super tight tolerances with what was an amazingly accurate gun um, that you can go and pick up off the shelf. It's tremendous. For me, knowing people with custom build rifles. 99% of the lads want a 700 action because it is reliable, because it is the best one out there. For you know, word of mouth, that's what he said. How do you weigh that action up against it, against the 700 action? Is it much difference? It's certainly a, a true action in terms of tolerances, but it's just what you're paying for. Not there's yep. any wrong with the 700 action. It's very reliable. There's a lot you can do with the 700 action. Yeah. Um, it's very very similar to a 700 blueprint uh, a footprint. Um, the well, bolt's similar at one end, but if you look at the rear end, it's totally different. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a, but almost a cross between. Um, where can I say Seiko? Almost a cross between a Seiko and a uh, and a Remington, I guess. Um, yeah. At the rear, triggers are beautiful. Hopefully, um, the best bits of both. Leopold bases on those are standard. Um, you can have the rail, obviously, if you want to. Um, yeah, lovely bit of kit, lightweight, nice. strong, durable. Um, Sarah coated if you want to. Have a bit of care. What do you say the trigger was in there? Uh, it's Timney trigger. It's a Timney. Um, okay. And we get the um, 1.9 to two and a half pounds. They come standard adjustable there, and they're factory set um, yeah. when they come out the, uh, the workshop there. Um, nice. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Man, that was a really good day. There's some amazing stuff here. Yeah. Really Fav good to see it. Favorite bit? Favorite bit's gotta be. I'd say it, the Highland Outdoors viewing. 
platform. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. To go up there and sit there playing with them optics, nosing at people all around the place. Mm. That's pretty cool. That's a really nice smart stand. One of the smartest stands here, yeah. actually. It's a good touch. For me, and it was actually a bit of a surprise, my favourite gun on the show was a Rosini. Yeah? Yeah, and I couldn't even quote you the model number. It's this side plated thing with half deep scroll and half beautiful game scene for about seven grand. I think actually, I really like that. That for me was probably one of my favourite guns of the show. Yeah. But apart from that, I, it's hard to tell because <sighs> you wait up against everything else. There's some epic stuff here. Yeah, and the, and no matter where the trends seem to sit, everybody's now fighting for that position. So you've got yeah. you've got six or seven different tactical models that are really cool yeah. and a lot of good and and good value. And you've got the lightweight stalking rifles, and you've got the custom build types. You've got everything. Yeah. Everybody's Every fighting. Every sporting for. shotgun you could ever want. Yeah. Mate, like, if you had two and a bit grand to spend on a shotgun, that's a hard choice here today. That's a Definitely. very, very difficult decision. <laughs> TGS gun. It would have been the TGS gun, but now it's but they're sold. all sold out. They're all sold out. It's so. fantastic. <laughs> Mate, I've had a brilliant day. Yep. Me I hope too, you've mate. enjoyed this video. It's been quite a long day though, so uh, we're gonna go and um, have a beer, <laughs> and chill out. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.